We will continue talking about sounds. So far, we have looked at consonants and vowels and then we were looking at places of articulations of different vowels and different consonants and manners of articulations of different consonants and different vowels. While looking at manners of articulations of vowels, we have seen that there are only two ways that we look at it, particularly the ones that I have shown you so far. They could either be a short vowel and a long counterpart of that, where short and long are relative duration of their production. And according to places of articulations, vowels are either back vowel, mid vowel or front vowel. And again, this back, mid and front is this sort of organization is on the basis of the direction of flow of air, which is either, which is uh, exhaling air. Uh, that this is why we have back, mid and front. Okay? Then we carefully started looking at some of these places where we have seen five different places of articulation so far, namely velum from where we get velar sounds, palate from where we get palatal sounds, teeth we get dental sound and lips we get bilabial sounds. Right? So, looking at this chart uh, once again, on the vertical axis we have places of articulations that I just mentioned to you and then we saw that merely place of articulation, merely identifying place of articulation is not enough for understanding of sounds because from each place of articulation we see various different sounds. And then we have, we have to have more things to describe these sounds. And then once we look at this, once we look at two more features such as aspiration which is extra, little bit extra flow of air and voicing which means vibration in vocal cord. By putting these two things together, we are able to get unique features for each sound that you have seen so far. And these many, many of these sounds are common to many languages. Some of them are specific to languages spoken in South Asia. I am going to show you some of some such sounds. However, there is one more point which is important to mention here that these are not only few places of articulations in this picture. There could be more. For example, when we, when we, when we look at sounds like ta, right? ta has a specific place of articulation. Ta is significantly different from ta. Can you hear the difference between the two when I say ta and ta? There is a significant difference between the two. The place of articulation for ta is teeth, where tip of the tongue goes very close or in between two teeth that, that are upper teeth and lower teeth and then we get these sounds. However, the place of articulation for ta is different from teeth, which is what? Alveolar ridge. Alveolar ridge, right? So, 
again looking at this picture teeth these are these are our teeth see this and i want to draw your attention here beginning from here this the, the sharp part of teeth all the way to this this is alveolar edge so what would that be in in generic term in general language what would that be how would how can we describe alveolar ridge in a simpler way because if i tell you alveolar ridge right right away this doesn't make much sense it makes sense only when you know the term and when you know the place so if you have to explain alveolar ridge to somebody what will you do roof of the mouth has many things in it like like palate is also roof of the mouth so more specific that's that's nice term roof of the mouth but more specifically how will you describe that should be, should not be difficult right roof adjoining teeth good so the muscular area where upper teeth are in fixed can we say that that's the alveolar ridge and in that area as well it's the upper part upper area is what we know as alveolar ridge okay there is a reason why i am talking about that and i i bring you to that point in a moment so is this clear alveolar ridge is the place of articulation then what hap what else happens if we want to look at movement of tongue what else is going on with that when we get sound like ta say it for yourself ta because all of us being speakers of our languages that is languages is spoken in south asia we can say these sounds several other like speakers of arabic or english may not be able to say this this sound why we will we will look at that but can you tell me about the position of lip position of tongue in that alveolar is sound and that those sounds which come from alveolar is are called retroflex sounds i have talked about velar palatal dental and labial so far didn't tell you about retroflex this is why i was holding them for this moment so what what's happening with the with the tongue it's bending backwards it's bending backwards can you can you can many of you say this ta ta see this thing can you give me some words where you see this sound ta no i come back to tennis in a minute no no so is this the spelling of tennis yes sir or or my point is i'm i'm glad you gave these examples i was going to give you these examples right away when you were talking about these sounds they are not sounds from alveolar ridge however when we say by we i mean speakers of south asian languages we do make it sound like them okay what do i mean by this difference by when when i say we make it sound like them i'm going to tell you in a moment but that these are not the sounds from that part or or the better way to put it is when speakers of english say these things then in that case these sounds are not from alveolar ridge and i'm going to tell you about that place of articulation also in a moment we are talking about sounds ta ta right so give us some more words where you find that i can give you a clue give me a word from our languages tomato tomato means okay more 
Have you heard a word called tum tum? Yes, no? Some of you? Tum tum is a horse carriage. Have you seen a horse carriage? Where did you see that? Movies, not in real life? Not yet? Wow. See how far we have moved? Okay, so tum tum is a horse carriage. Right? That is a word for tum tum. Tum tum is a word for horse carriage. More, more words with ta, uh, tha. Have you heard a word called thug? Cheat? Thug. Right? Have you heard a word called danda? Danda? No? Danda? No, that is dand. Danda. Stick. These are the sounds ta in tomato, tha in thug, and da in danda. Have you seen a, have you heard a word called dhakkan? Tap and dhakkan is also metaphorically used for stupid. Right? Have you have you heard this word? Right? There are lots of words in abundance with these sounds in Dravidian languages as well. I, I do not speak a Dravidian language either Telugu or Tamil, so I do not have a word for that. But if you think about the sound that I am talking about and try to find a word from that in Tamil, Telugu, Kannada and Malayalam, there are lots of words, lots of words with these sounds. Right? Can, can someone think about that and tell me? Some of the words from Telugu or Tamil or Malayalam with retroflex sounds. Ta, tha, da. No? No? Or, or are you still thinking about it? While you are thinking about it, let me continue saying this is another live example of what we know as knowledge of language. I am telling you. And I, I, I know that for sure that all Dravidian languages, to be more generic, all languages of South Asian uh, part of the world have these sounds in abundance. When we say these sounds in abundance, we mean lot of words with these sounds. I gave you some of the words that I know. Now I am asking you for some of the words from these languages the languages that you speak. The fact that you are, you are not able to tell me those, sound, those words with those sounds does not mean you do not know them. It is just that you know all, all those words, but you do not know that you know them. Okay? What is the, what's the last sound of the word called word Tamil? When I am saying, am I saying it correct when I say Tamil? No. Tamil? No. No. See this thing? So, when I am saying it, I am not saying it correct. What is that sound? Tamil. That sound is a, also a retroflex sound, which is not in this list, but that is also a retroflex sound. Say it for yourself and then see if this is happening or not. Whether th there may be a different place of articulation where the tongue is rolling back or not. That is a retroflex sound. See, see that? There could be many more, many more. Our languages are full of them. That is the point I am trying to make. Tongue curls back, hits the flap, that is alveolar ridge, and then comes back. These are specific, these, that, these are meaning these sounds are specific features of our languages. In other words, these sounds are not in languages which are spoken in other parts. So, anybody trying to learn our languages whose vocal tract is conditioned with the sounds of English or for that matter some other language are going to have difficulty with these sounds. Just like we have difficulty with some of the sounds of English, namely this one. The sound ta in 
tennis is not as t. We say, let me let me say it, let me say the same word twice, and then see if I am making the difference or not. Tennis, tennis. Tennis, tennis. Am I saying the first sound differently in when I am doing it twice? What's the difference? Any any idea? Not necessarily you have to answer this question. I know the answer to uh, this. Flexing much in the case of fast bowling. Flexing much meaning? Uh, it's not bending much. It's not bending much. In fact, that that's correct. In fact, when we say these sounds of English, including the sound in table, table, the tongue is not supposed to roll back. But our languages are full of such sounds and in our language we do not have this sound. So, what we say is what we are conditioned with. Therefore, we, we end up saying table, tennis, tongue, top, right. However, the, the way I am going to describe it first and then I will let you decide the place of articulation for these sounds. The way they are supposed to be said or the way English speakers say these things is the following. The tip of the tongue goes in between these two places. Look at this now. See alveolar is here and upper teeth it stays somewhere in the middle here. The tip of the tongue just stays somewhere there. T, t, t. Sometimes these descriptions are given like the following. English t is softer, right. You may have heard there are stereotypical descriptions of uh, Dravidian languages. The Dravidian languages are very hard. Have you heard this thing? Some, some of you must have heard th this thing. I hear this every time. Many other stereotypical different descriptions of not just Dravidian languages, many other languages as well. What this, what they really mean is Dravidian languages have lot of retroflex sounds, which is lot of words with retroflex sounds. For example, if we are talking about non-Dravidian languages that are Indo-Aryan languages, namely Hindi, Oriya, Punjabi, Bengali, you have only these five. Ta, tha, da, dha, na and some more, only a few of them. However, just now I gave you one example of the last sound of the word Tamil. That is another one in uh, Tamil and there are more. Another Dravidian language Malayalam has few more of Dravidian sound, few more of retroflex sounds compared to Tamil. See, see the point? Therefore, sometimes people say such things which sound stereotypical and at times derogatory. Okay? However, the point is these languages have more retroflex sounds. Coming back to English, English does not have any retroflex sound. This is what people mean when they say t, English t is softer. The tongue is not supposed to roll back and is this place of articulation in your mind for English t? Right? So, that, so, what do you think we are going to call that place? Take you back there again. If the other place was alveolar ridge, right, and the previous one was teeth. So, somewhere in between alveolar ridge and teeth, we have to find a place for that, and that place is called either 
sometimes it is called alveolar, simply alveolar. So, these sounds of English are called alveolar sounds. Okay? There are more sounds in English, specific to English, which could be located in these whole vocal apparatus. There are some sounds which are in our languages also and in English and Arabic as well, which could be located in this vo vocal apparatus. Remember, languages are going to share sounds, right? So, it is not possible that we have some sounds and that is not in English. I, I am telling you about retroflex sounds that these sounds are not there in English. So, this is part of the list which are not available in English, but then there are lots of sounds which are there in English. At the same time, there are some sounds of English which are available in our languages too. I am going to show you some of them as well. Is this place of articulation thing clear to everybody? Do you understand now when I said these things are not retroflex sounds? Clear? I, I think. Sorry? Yeah, so keep the, keep the tip of the tongue. I, this is not a training uh, place where I, can tell, when I, where I can help you with that, but I can describe that and I can show you at least once. Keep the tip of the tongue near upper teeth. That is upper part of the upper teeth. That is the place of articulation for that. When I say keep, keep it there, what I actually mean is speakers of English get their tip of the tongue there. Table, tongue, teeth, top as opposed to top, table, tongue. See that? In the second ones, what I am doing is it is getting rolled back. Now, a word of caution here as a footnote. If I end up saying or if you end up saying table, not table, table, I want to know from you given this description so far, is that our fault? Is that a deficiency? If it is not, why is it not deficiency? Conditioning is the key word. When we were growing up, we were growing up with these sounds with these languages, we, we are not growing up with sounds, these languages. Our, our generative apparatus that is in our human, our mind, that apparatus got clicked with these sounds. And simultaneously our vocal apparatus, when we started speaking one word, many words, few words and full sentence and language. During this process of 5 years or 6 years or 7 years of age, got conditioned with these the sounds that we have. Later on, we add one more language to that, where we found there are some sounds, some of those sounds are different. What we end up doing is, we end up instead of, no not instead, we, we try hard and still the vocal tract does not get conditioned. Instead what happens? is we find sounds that are very close to that. Therefore, instead of saying table, we end up saying table. Remember, we, 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 we do not say table, right? When we say table, table, we do not say table. What I mean is, it is not, it does not become dental. What it, be, what it becomes is retroflex. That is the only difference and it is not a deficiency because of conditioning and it is not a problem. If, if I do not sound like English speakers, that is not a problem, that is because I am not supposed to be doing that. Okay? It is like saying I do not look like someone, what is the problem in that? And this, this conditioning, trust me, is like DNA. Once conditioned, not going to change. Before, condi before conditioning gets matured or while it is in the process, you can do anything with that. By anything I mean, you have to do, you have to relocate the child in some other place. 
then it gets gets conditioned perfectly fine but once it is done there is absolutely no way you can change it absolutely no way therefore one should not be at all bothered even about if someone points it out to you that is difficulties of english particularly in terms of pronunciation keep speaking the way you do it's not a problem for you 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 are not making any error it's it's not a problem get 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 the point and i am saying this thing not because i want to be politically correct i won't repeat this thing again i am saying this thing after showing you the technical aspects of these things okay the, and this is the answer to these questions you may have heard about some training programs i see things written on roads come and learn english in 2 months right and then i have also heard about some training programs where they where some schools give training where you start sounding like americans there are some some schools of that type i don't know what they do there i don't know whether they have some vaccines or what uh, what happens i i really don't understand i am trust me i am not trying to be sarcastic about them but knowing what we know about language acquisition how conditioning works mechanism of sound production of any language and how we speak what we speak such things are not possible for 5 minutes i can also say that or or if if at all you get some training for 5 minutes or if you have done good training maybe you can do it for 10 minutes but that's all about it it's called hyper correction okay that's all about it the moment you leave that thing you are going to come back to your normal normal self when i am talking about language that is study of language i'm talking about spoken language in normal self okay so i could be saying this thing for you twice or maybe four times that this is not ta this is ta but trust me when i am speaking fluently either hindi or english i may be saying the same thing ta as in table ta as in top see see this thing can we move ahead now okay so that that's about one that's that's the story of retroflex sounds and it's little bit overlap with some of the sounds in english and the difference between retroflex sounds which come from alveolar ridge and alveolar sounds which come from alveolar itself curling the tongue back backward and not curling the tongue tongue backward the differences are these get it all right uh rest of the sounds we have we have already discussed have we uh and uh you have seen how aspiration and voicing did we did we talk about this or not we talked about that aspiration and voicing are going to give unique feature to these sounds many of you know artificial languages right many of you have done courses in artificial languages what's the most unique feature of artificial language java c plus more more unique no if i say if i say binary does this make any difference to you the use of binary symbols in artificial language either those binary symbols could be either 0 1 or in terms of plus minus does this make sense no do you do you see the use of 0 1 in artificial languages as it we don't actually use them uh, compilers convert into this well that is the problem most of the time what when you are doing these things now you are working with a compiler when those things are written they are artificial languages are primarily based on binary coding 
am I right? 0 or 1, same thing could be with plus or minus. One of that comes from the binary features of natural language. How does a sound in natural language gets uniqueness? It gets uniqueness only when you look at its binary classification. If we are talking about only aspiration or only voicing, we are not giving each sound distinctive features. The distinctive feature each of these sounds get only when we look at plus aspiration minus voicing. You see this top things, the this thing. So, 0 1 application of 0 1 in binary coding of artificial language is coming from here. And important thing is to you need binary coding to give uniqueness. I, I do not know how uh, artificial language was taught to you, because to teach artificial languages you do not even need to talk about this thing, but I am taking you somewhere else that where are those things coming from. The moment we say artificial language, it has to be, it has to do something with natural language. One of the things that come to binary, come to artificial language is from here. All right? Okay. With this, we can move ahead. We have looked at these places of articulations in details and these manners of articulations in details. There is one more part which I want to talk to you, one more types of sounds and they are fricative sounds. Okay? Now, uh, let me show you some of the words and with those words we can talk about some of such sounds. The sound sa in a word like subah or a sound sha in a word like sham. Do you see the difference between these two sha? Two Sa and sha. Tongue is, Tongue is making this difference. Let us be more precise. Context. Of what? Tongue is okay, hold on. First of all, when we say sa, sa, the first one, what is the place of articulation before we look at tongue? Sa, place of articulation. Because these two things are important to decide any sound or to talk about any sound, the first thing you need to look at is the place of articulation in the vocal apparatus. So, is it located in the front or back? Front, fine. Where exactly in front? Tip of the tongue. No, that is not the place. Tip of the tongue is involved in that, but where does the tip of the tongue go? teeth, does it, sorry, it stays, it stays floating, but towards which side, teeth of the, towards teeth, these sounds, first one is dental, just for that, and then tip of the tongue, what does it do to that teeth, does it go in between or does it touch it, brush it, right? Sa, sa, and then what is going on with the flow of air? It comes and it is fast. Because of that, fast flow, more flow, and tip of the tongue and teeth. This sound is called dental fricative. Dental fricative. It is important particularly to know this, because if we say this is a dental sound, you have seen the dental row. Do you see them here? Do you see that here? No. Now, if it is a dental sound, why is it not here? 
Remember I told you about this thing, this was designed by Panini approximately 2500 years ago from now, that is around 500 BC. So, it is a, it's a great thing that this guy came up with. It is not a mistake if this dental sound is not there. In fact, it is in, in, in my understanding of this thing, it is more than perfect in the sense that he is not talking about the manner of articulation which is close to what we say fricative here, he is putting them somewhere else. It is a dental sound, but it is somewhere else on the basis of its manner of articulation. Get this thing? Now, wherever it is put, it's the, the chart is not important for us, we are not learning alphabet writing system or anything, the chart is not important for us. See the next one, sham, what is the place of articulation for that? That is if lip, sorry, if tongue is involved, you have seen so far, the, most of the sounds that we have discussed, tongue is involved in some way or the other everywhere. Right? What is tongue doing to which place? Palate. Palate, right? Palate and what, what is it doing? Sure. So, this is a palatal sound. Then what is, and again you see, this is not in that list of palatal sounds. Right? This is not in the list of palatal sounds. So, if this is a palatal sound, what else is happening with tongue? Sure. Sure. Try a little harder, should not be very difficult. Should be making the U curve. Say, it, say it again. Should be making the U. U type of shape. So, what correct me if I am describing what you are saying as U type. The two side blades of tongue are touching palate and then that thus it is making a shape like this and the flow of air is through that. So, this sound is called palatal fricative, okay? palatal fricative. There are, there are couple of other names given to this type of sound which are not important for us right now. Get this thing? That is sha and sa. So, when these sounds are classified, they are classified on a different basis. The last one, something like, I, I do not know how to say that. When we say a word like purush, right? Uh, Somebody who speaks Hindi, Punjabi or Marathi, how do we say that? Which one is that when you are saying that? There is one thing which I did not put, put here. How many of you are familiar with the with Nagari writing system? Some of you? So, bear with me, I will just take one example from there to indicate something. So, I am talking about this kind of thing which is this, am I right? Then we have this which is this, which is the second one here. And then I am talking about something like this, right? Which is the third one? Third one is this, right? So, this is a writing system. This is a symbol for that sound. Get it? Symbol for that sound. Now, when we say the word Purush, right? do not bring the picture of the word, written word in your mind. Tell me how this word sounds. To be more precise, how the last sound, Sha, sounds. It is? Extended. No, 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 do not do not tell me that. What I am saying is, you are right, it is harder. But are you able to say that? 
or when I say Purush, do I sound like this? Actually, every time we say this sound, by we I mean here, speakers of non-Dravidian languages, that is speakers of Indo-Aryan languages particularly, say when they want to say this, they end up saying this one, because this sound is almost lost in Indo-Aryan languages. If we take example of Hindi or Marathi, we are whenever we want to say this, we actually end up saying this. So, in a spoken language, this is almost lost. However, this has not gone from writing system, which is another way of saying written language change very slow. Written languages change very slow or sometimes it, it does not need to. There are, it is just an example of a particular symbol which we write, but we do not say. And right now, I am talking about spoken language and in a spoken language what has happened is, this is lost, this is what we have. There is another interesting part, as a footnote I can tell you, in some languages, in some languages, namely Bangla, this also does not exist. If they want to say this one, they would end up saying this one. Now, these are the things which help people make stereotypes, but trust me, these are not, I mean, in the, in the lighter vein, people can use these things for fun. However, these are not funny things in nature. These are exclusively dependent on conditioning of vocal tract. Okay? On other hand, some languages does not have this one. They only have this one. For example, languages is spoken in Eastern UP or so not sorry, not, not East, yeah, Eastern UP and Western Bihar or for that matter entire Bihar to all the way to Assam. They do not have this one, they have just this one. So, if a, so a speaker of Hindi from Bihar would say Sam instead of Sham. And that is not their fault either, it is just that it is an output of conditioning. Okay? If someone wants to say this thing, Subah, probably a Bangla speaker would end up saying Shubah. Just listen to them carefully, you will get these things. And this is lost. However, this is not lost in Dravidian languages. This is intact in Dravidian languages because this is a retroflex sa, retroflex sha. Sometimes ago, probably this was available in Hindi also through Sanskrit, now it is lost. Dravidian languages have not lost it because Dravidian languages have more retroflex sounds. So, it is not too expensive quote unquote for them to retain this one. However, for Indo-Aryan languages, it is too expensive to retain. Again, expensive under quotes. Ex expensive simply means human mind works with economy. There is a some, there is a principle always under operation in human mind, which is called principle of economy. It does not like redundancies, it does not like complexity. When we say human mind does not like complexity, we actually mean it does not like redundancies. If there are only few words where you are going to find this sound retroflex sha, it is going to remove it and merge in favor of the existing one which is very close. That is called economy of principle, which is under operation by human mind. So, 
and this is an answer to the loss. Some, we described this, that something has lost, right? When we say Hindi or other, other Indo-Aryan languages have lost it, it is not that it slipped out of their pocket. It is not that they were traveling and they forgot it somewhere. It has disappeared. What could be compelling motivation for that disappearance? We are talking about language. There has to be something compelling and compelling motivation for that loss is ongoing principle, uh, under operation principle of economy in human mind. See this thing? Because of abundance of retroflex sounds, such loss is not visible in Dravidian languages. Get it? So, th these are the important things to, to, to keep in mind while we understand sounds and its structure. All right? One more sound and then we stop. Then we stop. We have, we often find a sound called F. Right? Please read the, the words mentioned here. I am I'm going to have to spend few more minutes on this thing, which we do, which I do on Monday. Okay. But I just want to introduce this to you. When we say a word like fool right? and a, a word like fool, do you hear the difference between the two? Fool and fool, what is the difference? You can, you can see that difference. Lips touching, lips touching, both the lips touching in which one? Pha, right? That is because this is a bilabial sound. Both the lips must touch. Now, the next one is, the first one is Pha, where lips are not touching each other. Pha. Now, this sound fa, the first one, is not in abundance in our languages. And the second one, pa, pa, where lips are touching, is not available in English. So, when we learn an English word like fool, it is highly likely that many of us would end up saying fool. Okay? However, these two words are completely different things because of the first sound of these two words. Are you with me? See the, you see the difference between the two sounds? Now, what is the place of articulation? We already know the place of articulation for pa in the word pool or pa in the word phal. Heard these two words, phal and pool? We know the place of articulation of these two sounds. What is the place of articulation of fa? Clearly, both the lips are not touching. So, where is the place of articulation for that? Fa, right? Upper teeth and lower lip. So, what do we call it? And that is that is going to be another place of articulation another type of sound in this vocal apparatus, right? So, upper teeth, sorry, lower teeth and lower lips and upper teeth. So, what is, what will be the sound? Simple, lips and teeth, labiodental, that is called labiodental, I am sorry, I I should not have expected that term from you, labiodental, right? And again, what about the flow of air? Is it too much or like ka? Too much. Too much? Therefore, it is classified as fricative. Fa is labiodental fricative. See this thing? Now, Fa 
is not in not in abundance in our language there are there are few more which i discuss with you on monday and then we will close this part on this part of discussion on sounds and then we go to the go to uh, word formation processes where we see application of these things in words okay and possible constraints on word formation thank you